In the beginning of the 21st century, there were a little over 6 billion people on this planet. Now, there are over 7 billion, and the growth rate is exponential. As the population rapidly increases, so does the demand for food. People are going hungry every day, and this condition will only continue to worsen unless we can come up with a way to combat world hunger. One of the biggest demands in the world, as the population grows, is for meat. Right now, the meat production industry is not sustainable at all. Animals are bred in inhumane conditions, trapped in small cages and fattened up for slaughter. The slaughterhouses where they are killed are more often than not unsanitary, and the processing that the meat goes through before it can be released to consumers includes the use of chemical treatments to combat diseases and bacterial contaminants. These conditions will only get worse to keep up with the demand for meat. According to the United Nations, the worldwide consumption of meat is projected to increase by almost 10% between now and 2030, when the average person will eat over 100 pounds of meat per year. Just think of the sheer number of animals that will be bred and slaughtered for the sole purpose of keeping up with consumers. The meat production industry also causes various environmental problems, as it takes up a lot of land, water, and energy, causes methane gas to be released into the atmosphere, and more. And not all of the meat from these animals is even used. Most people only eat the same few cuts of meat, which means tons of waste. In short, eating meat is not sustainable unless we change the way we think about it. Scientists now are attempting to address numerous issues surrounding meat production with in vitro, or lab-grown meat. Although many argue that there are plenty of other, less controversial, more cost-effective alternatives to meat that exist, in vitro meat will be a viable long-term solution to the problems surrounding the steadily increasing demand for meat in the next few decades. The technology used to create in vitro meat has been in development for a while, but has been previously used only for medical purposes, such as repairing human tissue and organs. The process begins by harvesting muscle-specific stem cells from a living animal, a process which does not hurt the organism at all. The muscle tissue is then injected to a cell culture, in which the cells divide and continue to grow outside of the animal's body into fibers of muscle tissue. These fibers are then assembled to form products like hamburger patties. This means that veritable tons of meat could be produced from only a few cells collected from a small number of animals, a concept that is drastically different to the current meat supply process. Not only is this process effective, it's also produced a burger that was impressively close to ordinarily produced meat. In 2013, Dr. Mark Post debuted the first hamburger made of cultured beef, to which taste testers responded that the burger had the same texture as regular meat, but that the flavor was not quite there. This can be attributed to the fact that burgers are made up of a number of muscle tissues, blood vessels, and fats, while Post's burger was made of only one specific muscle tissue. It should also be noted that this experiment took place over five years ago, and in vitro labs and companies have been making incredible progress in recent years. Despite the revolutionary implications of in vitro meat, there are quite a few setbacks that the technology faces. The most pressing issue is the money and time required to produce lab-grown meat. Dr. Post's burger cost somewhere over $300,000 to make over the course of three months. The amount of heat and electricity required to grow meat is also not ideal. Using such expensive technology at this rate to feed upwards of 7 billion people is simply not feasible. It also means that lab-grown meat could have further detrimental effects on the environment. However, today's scientists have been working tirelessly since Post's burger to make the technology more cost and energy efficient and are making great progress in terms of putting more affordably priced cultured meat burgers on the market. It's even predicted that cultured meat burgers could be available in grocery stores for similar prices to regular beef burgers in less than 10 years. Unfortunately, there are still a number of other issues with in vitro meat. In most cases, scientists need fetal bovine serum, which is obtained by harvesting the blood of a fetal calf, in order to provide an ideal environment for the cells to divide during the in vitro process. Unless scientists are able to successfully achieve their goal of creating plant-based growth factors, it's unlikely that in vitro meat will ever become cheaper or completely cruelty-free. Even still, there remains arguably the biggest hurdle in vitro meat has to overcome, public opinion. While most people may not know what in vitro meat is, truthfully explaining how it's made causes varying elements of disgust and shock. 
terms like lab-grown and test tube in association with meat are guaranteed to provoke some degree of repulsion in the average meat eater. The consumer ick factor will prove to be the greatest obstacle for making cultured meat mainstream, but the pressing problems surrounding the rising demand for meat might go a long way in helping to change public opinion. The consumer population is always changing. Millennial consumers are no longer satisfied just with a good meal. They want a meal that they feel good about, made from ingredients that are aligned with their values. The fact also remains that as icky as eating meat grown in a petri dish may seem, in vitro meat is much more natural than the over-processed meat that the average consumer currently buys, which comes from animals fed with garbage and slaughtered in highly unsanitary conditions. Cultured meat is also not genetically engineered or modified in any way, despite what some may think. As demographics change and children mature into tax-paying, grocery-buying adults who are more concerned about their role in the world than previous generations, in vitro meat might just become the latest in a number of ways to be a better global citizen. A decade ago, alternative meat would have brought to mind images of unappetizing tofu or veggie burgers. After a few years, it became a slightly more appetizing term, thanks to products such as soy nuggets. Since then, plant-based proteins have become even more sophisticated and realistic. Many companies, such as Impossible Foods and Beyond Meat, have even created burgers that bleed just like real meat. Scientists looking for other ways to produce meat examined its chem chemical composition and turned to other sources in nature to replicate the effect without using the actual animal, with incredible success. The Impossible Burger, for instance, involves plant-based proteins such as potatoes, coconut oil, wheat, and a compound known as heme to create meatless burgers that smell, sear, and bleed just like the real thing. For those who want to eat meat without feeling guilt over inhumane, unsanitary animal slaughter and a number of environmental problems, plant-based proteins are the perfect alternative. Critics of lab-grown meat even argue that these plant-based alternatives are a more practical solution to the problems surrounding the demand for meat, as they mimic meat almost exactly. Plant-based options are also currently more cost and energy effective than meat grown in the lab. However, plant-based meats don't have the range that in vitro meat could have. As the technology becomes more sophisticated, cultured meat could expand from creating products like chicken nuggets and burgers to fish and even steaks. Vegan and vegetarian diets may be growing more popular, but there will always be a meat-eating population. Less than 9% of people in developed countries are vegetarian, which means that most of the developed world still eats meat. For this population, alternatives that are not actual meat will never truly resolve the demand for it. However much in vitro meat is criticized, the fact remains that it's an incredibly promising alternative meat source, and it has the capacity to transform the future as it becomes more readily available. Beef production makes up over 65% of livestock emissions, requires four times the land of dairy production, and uses seven times the resources needed to produce pork and poultry. By essentially eliminating the need for the animal to produce meat, lab-grown meat would drastically cut down on carbon dioxide emissions, of which livestock accounts for more than even cars, reduce the land and water used for meat production and livestock by over 90%, and decrease deforestation, among countless other environmental benefits. Cultured meat could also be healthier than ordinary meat. Labs are arguably cleaner than slaughterhouses, so it stands to reason that meat grown in a lab would be much cleaner than meat produced in a slaughterhouse or factory. Eliminating this step would cut out many of the diseases and bacterial contaminants that are spread through meat. It would also cut out the use of antibiotics used to prevent those diseases, so that the end product would be free from unnatural chemicals. Also, by getting rid of the need for mass slaughterhouses and the large supply of animals to produce meat, inhumane and cruel treatment of animals would be greatly reduced. Without the use of so much land, energy, and livestock, eating meat would also become much more sustainable. In short, in vitro meat is better for people, better for animals, and better for the environment. With the number of increasingly creative ways to substitute meat steadily multiplying and growing in popularity, there is no question that the way we think about meat will change completely in the next few decades. Despite current public opinion and high costs, in vitro meat might be the alternative needed to eating healthier, cleaner, and more sustainable meat. It may seem to have many faults, but the same is true of any new or developing technology. Advocates of plant-based proteins over in vitro meat have a somewhat viable argument, but plant-based meat is not a practical alternative for feeding mass populations. 
Neither alternative should completely overtake the other. Rather, they should be used together to feed different demographics to work towards various goals, including finding a solution to end world hunger. At the end of the day, in vitro meat is one of the most promising alternative meat sources for the future. As the demand for meat increases, and natural resources needed to keep up with that demand decrease, it's clear that technologies such as in vitro meat are the key needed to start living more sustainably.